Are you zealous for God? How does it make you feel when you see people saying things about God as if he's not there or doing things that are so hurtful, sinful and disgusting in his sight and acting like God doesn't exist? How does it make you feel? You know, the word zealous has so many meanings, but I like the stronger ones. I like ardent. I like passionate. I like earnest. I like burning. Are you zealous for God? I like spirited. I like that meaning, spirited. I like militant. And I like fervent. God is so much more than a lot of people see him. God is almighty, all righteous, all powerful. God is all knowing, all doing. He can do anything. And so we cannot just treat God as if he is like a mortal man. He isn't. He's our creator. You know, Psalm 119 is a psalm that I'm going to go through today because the writer, whoever wrote that psalm, whether it was David or someone else, the writer is not so important right now. But in Psalm 119, the entire chapter, it shows where the writer was just consumed with pleasing God he was consumed he was so zealous for God and so I'm gonna go through a few verses here in verse 5 he said oh that my ways were directed to keep your statutes then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments there he's saying that when he looks when he searches and looks at the things you know that God desires, that God wants. Oh, he wishes, he's, he's fallen short in so many ways when he reads the commandments of God. He feels ashamed. How does it make you feel when you see that you're not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing, you know, you know according to what God wants? How does it make you feel? In verse 29, he said, remove from me the way of lying and grant me your law graciously. There you see that he was not perfect, but he had a desire. He had a desire. He had a problem lying. And so there he was praying to God, asking for that to be removed from him. All his desire was is to please God was to live according to his statutes, according to his precepts. If you read the whole psalm, I did not count, but the amount of times that he spoke about the statutes of God, it's unimaginable. So many times he was so consumed with trying to keep the laws of the Lord. And that's how we all should be. That's how we should all be. In verse 37, he said, Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. Here he's admitting. Again, he's not perfect. He looks at things that he's not supposed to be looking at. But he has a desire to do better. He has a burning desire to do better. He has a passion to do better. He has a zeal to please God. In verse 62, he said, At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your judgment. He's trying so much. He's trying so much, whatever it is, he's trying. He gets up in the middle of the night and he prays. He prays. 
and he believes that every, every, whatever it is that God does, you know, he, he, it is righteous in his sight. God's judgments are right, righteous to him. And he gives thanks to the Lord. He prays later on in the chapter. You'll see, he prays so much. He's consumed with pleasing God. In verse 67, he said, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Sometimes it takes affliction, calamity. You know, sometimes it takes for us to get to a very low place to be obedient to God. And nothing is wrong with that. Sometimes that's how some of us will come to the realization that we should obey God that we should live according to his precepts so that's okay so he went there he went there right now he's sick he's sick on his bed and he's saying no he's keeping the word of God he has no choice and that's why some of us we have to get to to that place you know where we have no choice but to some of some people how many people have been you know, it's when they go to prison that they come to know God. They, be, you know, they become born again. That's what it takes. That's what it takes for some people. Many people, it's on their hospital bed. That's when they give their lives to the Lord. That's when they make that decision that they will no more live in sin. Even many Christians who, already, who have already given their lives to the Lord. It takes the bed of affliction for some people to wake up. Whatever it takes, it doesn't matter. Because none of us is perfect. In verse 71, he said, It is good for me that I have been afflicted. So some of us, that is what, if that is what it takes for us to realize that we must do the right thing then so be it nothing is wrong with that that i may learn your statutes so that's what he said it is good for me that i have been afflicted that i may learn your statutes amen will you obey god today will you will you live according to his statutes in verse 78 he said let the proud be ashamed for they treated me wrongly with falsehood but i will meditate on your precepts it's so important for him to meditate on god's precepts there's always going to be some way that we are lacking god is so big and wide and there is so much so much to, to, to gain or to do when it comes with to God. There's so much more to receive. And so if you meditate on his precepts, if you make that your daily practice, your lifestyle, things will change. Anything you fill up your life with, after a while it will become a part of you. It will become who you are and what you stand for. It will be your representation everywhere you go. So meditating on God's precepts is good. If you meditate on them, after a while you will find yourself just wanting to be obedient to him. Just doing what is right in his sight. In verse 87 he said, they almost made an end of me on earth. But I did not forsake your precepts. So even when he thought he was going to die, whatever it is that they did to him, he stood fast on God's precepts. He did not break them. He stood fast and he stood up for what was right. Can you stand up for God even when trouble comes? Can you stand up and do the right thing no matter what it is? When it comes, whether it's temptation, whether it's affliction, whatever it is, will you stand up for God 
and obey his precepts? Will you have that zeal for him? Will that zeal inside of you be so strong that you stand up anyways, you stand for him? God desires for you to be zealous about him and about everything that concerns him. In verse 136, he says, Rivers of water run down from my eyes because men do not keep your law. Here it hurts him. It hurts him to the point where he cries when he sees things that men do. Things that men do that are not in accordance with the laws of God. It hurts him. He cries. Does it, does it grieve you? Do you feel angry sometimes when you see people doing same things that you don't even know? You wonder how come? How can they utter that from their mouth when there is a God hearing and seeing? I know, men, we're not perfect. I know that. But even sometimes when you when you intervene and you say something like, oh, how dare you say that? Or remember God, whatever it is you say, they, they still try to justify what they just said about God or justify the action, whatever it is they do, if you try to correct them. Do you have that zeal for God? In verse 139, he said, My zeal has consumed me because my enemies have forgotten your words. Zeal has consumed him. Oh Lord, help some of us. I pray that the zeal of God will consume you today. I pray that it will come upon you in such a way that you yourself will not understand you yourself will be in awe when you look you cannot stop talking about god you cannot stop wanting righteousness you cannot stop being hungry for righteousness i pray that that kind of zeal will come upon you today in the name of jesus christ oh hallelujah thank you lord thank you jesus now how many of you will like this video how many of you will share this video and how many of you will hit that subscribe button please subscribe share like and i'll catch you in the next video bye